Here it is. Mike Bloomfield's Telecaster. What a neck. We know from Dan Erlewine's forensic work on it that it's April of 63, I believe he said, and that the pickups, and it looks to me like maybe this whole plate here and the controls, yeah, it's a later toggle switch, later knobs. I think this plate looks later. It looks like that late 60s chrome. The, everything comes from 68 or something. The bridge pieces are changed too. Sure looks like an April of 63 headstock to me. The neck is fabulous. Really good. It, it's, it's a little thinner here than I thought it would be. I, I don't even know if, it, if it's a full, if it's a full uh, 1 and 11 sixteenths. It feels like 1 and 5 eighths to me. It really drops off at about the fourth fret here. It really starts getting thinner. I don't think it's been cut down. I, I, that looks original. That finish looks original. It doesn't look, like, doesn't look like it's been messed with. Let's plug it in. Let's see. That sounds like him. Woo! It has that not every Telecaster does that thing. Only the really good ones where you can really dig into it. And it snaps right back up at you. I probably listen to this guitar more than I listen to any recorded guitar that you can think of. I've listened to this record probably a couple thousand times. I mean, I... I Lucked out and got this when it first came out. It just changed my life. Bloomfield's playing. The way these guys look on the cover. I mean, everything about it. Um, there's a picture of Mike on the back playing this guitar before it had this unfortunate cutaway, of course. All right, first song, Born in Chicago. Second song, Shake Your Money Maker. Give me a break. Nobody can do a record like that now, you know? He does this great thing. He slides down on, on the low E string. The song's in E. He slides down on the low E string and goes. <laughs> then when the band goes to A, again he goes. <laughs> While they're playing the A chord, he stays in E, you know? Forget about it. Back to E. Then when the band goes to B, he goes. Whoa, go on, baby, go on back to school. Come on. I think I learned that chord, that sixth thing, you know, which. It can sound sweet or it can sound nasty like, like, like Bloomfield did it there. You know, Bloomfield would switch in the middle of a solo. He'd be, he'd be. He'd go to that rhythm pickup. That's that sound. And then, of course, later, I listened to this a lot. We all heard this. There's probably very few people that were alive in the United States in the late 60s that haven't heard this guitar, because it was on all these, it was on like a Rolling Stone. You know, I mean, um, powerful stuff. Because I remember in the summer of 65, uh, riding on my bicycle down to the playground in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. 
We're listening to Like a Rolling Stone playing out of the speaker by the swimming pool. And we're going, I don't know what that is, but it's the greatest thing I've ever heard. That's this guitar is on there. Listen to the songs on this record. Tombstone Blues from a Buick 6. One of my favorite Dylan songs. Ballad of a Thin Man. This guitar. Highway 61. This guitar. Crazy. Michael Bloomfield guitar. Bob, his name comes right after. Bob Dylan, guitar, harmonica, piano, and police car. Michael Bloomfield guitar. Thank you very much. This guitar is the guitar that he was playing with Bob Dylan at Newport. The famous Bob Goes Electric moment. It's this guitar. You see those pictures? There he is up there. You know, this guitar, you know, at, at Newport on, on these records, a very, very important guitar in, in American 60s musical history. I can't think, to me, of a, of a more important instrument for, for what got played on it. This instrument in Bloomfield's hands played music and changed things. This was incendiary. This, this was explosive. It, it, it was angry. It was frightened. It was everything. Uh, it was everything that, that, that the late 60s was. I mean, you could say, okay, it's, it's a shame that this stuff's been done to it, and it is, but I, I see no reason to doubt knowing what we know about where it's come from. I see no reason to doubt that this is Mike Bloomfield's guitar.